Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've covered what sequences are and how to find if a sequence converges or not and how to find the limit of a sequence when it converges, let's now take a look at what a series is and how to work with the various types of series. I don't know if that's a proper word or not. Anyway, here's an example. We have a series which is defined as an infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by the product of n times n plus 1. So if we're going to plug in some numbers to see what this looks like, this series will look as follows. This is equal to 1 divided by, when n is equal to 1, this becomes 1 times 1 plus 1, plus when n is equal to 2, this becomes 2 times 2 plus 1 in the denominator, plus 1 divided by 3 times 3 plus 1, and so forth. And if we work this out, this becomes equal to 1 divided by 2, plus 1 divided by 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 divided by, that would be 12, and so forth. And if we're trying to find out what the total sum of that sequence is, or that, oh, I should say, the total sum of the series is, there's some techniques that we can employ. Well, first of all, what we could do instead, we can say, well, we can write this as a sum of partial fractions. So this can be written as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n minus 1 over n plus 1. So if you want to see if this indeed equals this, we can say that if we cross multiply and write over common denominator, we get n plus 1 minus n divided by n times n plus 1. This is equal to 1 divided by n times n plus 1. So yes, indeed, we get back the original. So it's better to write like that, and you'll see in a moment just why. This is one of those tricks that we use when we're dealing with this type of series. So we're going to now write it as an infinite sum like this. So this becomes equal to 1 divided by 1 when n equals 1 minus 1 divided by 2. And then we add that 2 when n is equal to 2, 1 divided by 2 minus 1 divided by 3. And then we add that to the next term when we get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. And you can see the pattern that develops. So you can then say, well, then the next term, that would be plus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 5, and so forth. Now when you look careful, we have 1 over 1, which is 1. And then if you combine these two together, we have a plus half and a minus half. Well, that's equal to 0. And here we have a minus 1 third and a plus 1 third. That's equal to 0. And a minus 1 fourth and a plus 1 fourth. That's equal to 0. And you can see how that pattern continues. So if we now take the limit of this, so what I'm going to do is, since this is s sub n, I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum, which is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum. So s sub n can be written as this, so it would be the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, is equal to, and then you realize that all these middle terms disappear, and all that's left is the very first term, which is 1, and all that's left in the very end would be minus 1 over, and if n becomes infinity, then this will be infinity. And of course, 1 minus 1 over infinity is simply equal to 1, which means that the original sum, S sub n, which is defined as this, which can be written in this format, or which could be written in this format. That way we can show that this whole sum, this whole series sums up to a single number equal to 1. Not something you would expect, but that's the final result of this particular series. When you add up all the terms, you get 1. And that's an example of what you do when you have a converged series. Now, this is just simply an example. Later on, we'll go through all the various types of series that we're going to run into and how to deal with them one by one. That's how we do this.